Hello and welcome to the Dittonworks YouTube channel where today I've got back to my favourite subject which is loudspeakers. Today I've been listening to a pair of Russell K Red 100s. There's a little bit of a backstory for me in these speakers that many years ago I visited my local hi-fi shop and being demoed as I walked past the demo room were these speakers and they caught my ear and I thought blimey they sound good dropped off my Riga turntable which was being serviced and rather than bothering the customer who was having a listen to these I left a couple of days later I returned to the hi-fi shop to collect my serviced Riga and I inquired with the gentleman who owns the shop Alastair at Signals Hi-Fi what were those speakers you were listening to the other day in the demo room and he said what the ones with the red fronts yes are oh, there of the new ones from Russell K. Russell K, Russell Kaufman. Now, Russell Kaufman has worked for several speaker manufacturers over the years. Um, interesting for me is he used to work at Morel, which was literally just down the road from me on Ransom's industrial estate. He has also worked for Kef and B&W and I believe Wharfdale. He's made some pretty impressive speakers over the years, but these are his own. So rather than being governed by marketing departments and money men and so on and so on and so on, he had a little bit more freedom, or actually a lot more freedom to do exactly what he wanted. So he started Russell K loudspeakers. Now, I'm a big fan of the BBC kind of lossy cabinet design. I think if you have that lossy cabinet that's damped well with the bitumen panels, you get this very lively sound, it's very musical. I'm a real fan of that. There is alternatives, you can go for a heavily braced, heavily damped, you know, as inert as humanly possible cabinet, and argue that all of the resonant frequencies have been pushed out of the audible range, and it's a lot more uncoloured, less distortion. But in some instances, that knocks all the musicality out of the speaker. Not always, but in some instances. Now, Russell Kay's philosophy is sort of like the BBC lossy cabinet design. So they are a thin wall cabinet, very lively. But he doesn't damp them with bitumen panels and he doesn't put any wadding inside them. Now, I would imagine, wow, you're going to develop a very boxy sounding loudspeaker. But it, the story doesn't end there that... On, on these particular ones, the, either side of the bass driver is a sort of mechanical dampening feature, which is essentially panels or shelves, as he describes it, with multiple holes in them or porous is porous. Works somewhat like an air filter. And what that basically does is push the mid-range fre mid -range frequencies away from the port frequencies and the ports are tuned very low on these are 35 hertz i believe maybe 32 hertz so what you're getting from the port is just bass rather than mid-range and how that affects the sound and this is a good example if you play the track by janice ian called tattoo in the lyrics a new name was tattooed on her wrist when you get a new that particular way she sings that on certain speakers comes through very colored and that's probably because that reaches the resonant frequency of certain speakers out of the, out there. Now, the first track I tried with these undamped, very open cabinets was obviously Janice Ian, because if a new name was tattooed on her wrist, came through with any kind of coloration, I would say that, yep, basically, sorry, Russell, you should have used damping, and this is not the way to go. This is not the case. These are so uncolored, so clean, it's unbelievable. They really, really, really do vocals incredibly well. And this is, the story doesn't end there because with this approach to designing it, you've got less going on inside the cabinet, that these frequencies, this air pressure inside the cabinet isn't slowed down or damped or contained within the wadding so you end up with a very fast very coherent lively speaker with very very little coloration take it from me try Janice Ian's tattoo either version the live one or the al studio album that there's a particular frequency that I've found upsets quite a lot of speakers that really is my 
test track for checking out mid-range or vocal capabilities of a lot of loudspeakers. And these passed it with flying colours. Now, this particular pair is an early pair, so they are vinyl wrapped, um, which might not be to everybody's taste, and the red fronts might not be to everybody's taste either. You can cover that up with metal grills, which look pretty uh, industrial, but with the magnetic clips on there, That hides the red front quite nicely and doesn't actually affect the acoustics of the loudspeaker in any way I could really detect. So moving forward, the new ones that you can buy brand new today are real wood veneered and they do look very classy. They look, they look more elegant than this wrap. But I don't really care about the looks. I don't really care about real wood veneer sometimes doesn't bother me that they're wrapped and it doesn't bother me that they've got red fronts to be honest with you because one test is what my other half thinks and the minute I played them she said I like those and the thing <laughs> that nearly always ticks the box for her is bass she likes bass and these are really punchy they've got real depth and drive to the low frequencies and it's not overblown, it's very controlled. And another good example is if you're listening to a track with a kick drum and a double bass, it's not like suddenly everything's, you know, full on. They're not, they're very well balanced. You get bass in a way that you're supposed to, say from the double bass, and you get the punch from the kick drum in the way you're supposed to. There's nothing worse than very boomy or overbearing loudspeakers. And these, just control it so well. A word that keeps coming back to me with these speakers is clean. They are incredibly clean. If we move up to the HF, I must admit they are a little bit brighter than what I'm used to. I think the HF units in these are very crisp and very clean, but they're a little bit elevated in the HF compared to say my Spendors. Um, but no more so than any of the metal dome tweeters I've had in various other loudspeakers over the years. And they are clean, very detailed. If detail is something that's very important to you, then you'll be very impressed with these speakers. Next thing, imaging. Now they are quite a wide baffle. We'll have a closer look at the actual speakers themselves in a minute, but the baffle is quite wide. And that does always have an impact on the way a speaker images. If you've got a very wide baffle, that means it's more difficult to get the speakers further apart. But I wouldn't say these image, image badly at all. I have found other speakers that are probably slightly narrower or deeper and narrower, slightly different dimensions, image a little bit better. But they're often smaller and sometimes sealed, so can't produce that level of low frequency response. And can be coloured in the mid-range. Again, no coloration, very, very, very clean. So let's have a closer look at these. I might even take one apart and have a look inside it actually, because having no damping, no material inside, no real massive bracing to talk of, no bitumen panels, you, you honestly think this couldn't work, but it does. It's very, very, very effective. Let's have a closer look at the speaker and then we'll carry on discussing it and then perhaps I'll do some sound clips and see if it comes across on this video. Okay, so let's take a closer look at these loudspeakers. So I was mentioning about the width of the baffle. So my Spendors come in, let's say 27 and a half. The Russell case are 26 and a half. So that's quite a wide baffle for what is considerably smaller speaker than my Spendors. However, this is quite interesting. These sitting on the something solid 60 centimeter stands are approximately the same height as my Spendors are on their hi-fi rack stands. Certainly when these are sitting on these plinths, they are virtually identical height. Now let's have a listen to this resonance. Might be able to pick this up. This is the Russell K. Sounds very boxy, but it doesn't come across when you're playing them. This is the Spendors. Very different sound, very different resonance, very different way of pushing those 
what can only be described as not harmful, but annoying cabinet resonance in the mid range. The way Russell's done it works, the way Spendor does it works. Let me just get a different speaker to show you an even different sort of tone. <clears throat> so although these are very small, pair of Celestian Aid compacts which are used on my television. There are many ways to change the resonance of the cabinet or to have the cabinet resonate in a different way. So with these, Celestians were stiff, very well braced, lots of wadding inside there and try and make the cabinet not resonate where it's important in the mid range. The Russell K, the shelves inside here help stop the harmful resonance coming out of the port. On the Spendor, the harmful frequencies are absorbed by the bitumen panels and that energy is sort of transferred into heat. And it works, it works, but it would be your own personal preference which one your ears preferred. But take it from me, the Russell K's are incredibly, and I've said it already, incredibly clean. There's no way other, no other way of describing it. It's just clean. Very little coloration, impressive bass response, very good, if not somewhat elevated HF levels. But it's not harsh. It's not hard on your ears. It doesn't bother me. The only thing I would say, they are quite wide. So the imaging of these is probably no better than the Spendor's is as where something like these, because they're so small, that you put those on a set of 60 centimetre stands well away from the wall and they just disappear. That's a characteristic of very small loudspeakers. Something like the LS35As are the same. They just image incredibly well once they're set up properly. Okay, let's have a further chat about sound and we'll try and have a listen to them. Okay, we'll try a sound clip. This is um, the drum solo from Rat Salad off the Jazz Sabbath album, which I absolutely love. Uh, anybody who's not seen this channel before, basically that's an SL1210 Mark II from Technics with a Funk Firm APM, Cobra Head Shell and Houdini with an Autofon 2M Black, traveling down to a Vincent uh, Valve Phono stage with separate PSU, down to a Quad Artera Pre and then into a Meridian 557 power amp and Rocket uh, AudioQuest Rocket 22 speaker cable going off to the Russell Ks. Let's have a go with this sound clip. It's not ideal. It don't, doesn't really give you an idea of how these sound, but people ask for sound clips, so I try and give them to them. Okay, let's have a listen to Jazz Sabbath and see if any of these really beautiful nuances and detail and lack of coloration that these speakers have comes through on the sound clip. Let's give it a go.
Okay, I'm not sure if any of that will come across on the video, but like I said, people ask for it, so I give them the sound clips. For me, all of like the grad tie hats, all of that, brilliant, just absolutely excellent detail. These are so good on the detail side of things. The base as well, it gives you it where you need it, where you want it, rather than all across the board. I can't stand loudspeakers that are just boomy because you get that almost one note bass, which is not how things are. You know, you can even tune a kick drum to sound a different way. You can tune a bass guitar to sound a different way. And there's nothing worse than a speaker just giving you that one note type of boominess because it absolutely destroys the illusion of music being played. These absolutely emulate that. They absolutely give you all of the tonal characteristics throughout the bass registers, whether it be that kick drum, whether it be the double bass, whether it be really deep singing. It's really, really, really good. I don't want to use the word accurate because who knows what that means because I've got no way of comparing the accuracy of these to the original performance in the studio of this track. But the word I will keep coming back to is clean. They sound extremely clean. No coloration, very, very pleasant to listen to. Non-fatiguing, excellent, fantastic sound in loudspeakers. Take care, guys. I'll catch up with you soon.